Hello friends, I'm David Miller, Phoenix, Arizona multimedia artist. A lot of people know me as a photographer and an educator. I'm talking to you from my home studio, Primordial Creative. And I'm talking to you on the eve of starting a new part-time job in a art installation experience kind of thing. It's called Wonder Spaces and it's a corporation out of San Diego. They are opening these art experiences around the country. We have one that just opened in Scottsdale and I'm going to be a guide there part-time. Anything I do that's art related, I feel like is going to kind of add to my body of knowledge and also expand my horizons, if you will. Uh, I really want to learn about making these kind of art installation projects, these interactive things, because uh, I feel like that's really something that's taking off in creative space right now. I went to a place called Meow Wolf, which a lot of people are familiar with, a few years ago in Santa Fe. Uh, absolutely blown away by it. Meow Wolf has been expanding into Denver, Vegas, Phoenix, and Washington, D.C., probably other places in the future. Uh, I've seen places like in San Francisco, the Museum of Ice Cream. These sort of artsy installation pop-up things are becoming more frequent, and I want to be part of that. So I'm real excited to get a job for one of those corporations and figure out what they do. I have gone about six, seven months without having any kind of regular job, and I'm actually really excited to have a semblance of a regular job. That's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Uh, art and working and being a working artist and having you know day jobs or part-time jobs that help get you by because I feel like many people who want to be artists or who are artists feel this shame that they do other things to pay the bills, to eat, to live and uh, first of all I want to say that there is absolutely no shame in being able to pay your bills, eat, live, do things with your family and friends besides work 18 hours a day slaving away on uh, your creative endeavors. I want to refer to a podcast I listened to yesterday by an amazing speaker and influencer named Seth Godin. Seth Godin was involved in tech startups in the early internet days and he basically makes his living teaching people how to be marketing gurus, but he isn't all about business. He is, in my opinion, kind of a uh, ultra leftist humanist artist inspiration. Uh, Seth took a question from a listener on his podcast who was getting a job as an Uber driver and he felt shame in that because he felt like in a way it was giving up on his art. I'm not sure if I should take another job and try to do this on the side again. Yeah, how risky would you be in terms of finances and going out on a limb to do the thing that you believe will succeed? The thing is, we have to work. We work to create value so we can get resources, so we can survive. Work is not guaranteed to be fun. Work is not guaranteed to be art. If we're lucky, if we're fortunate, if we plan, we may be able to find work where we get paid to create something that we are proud of, to make a difference, to do our art. But it's not a guarantee. You get to keep playing the game as long as you keep having enough money to play the game. And so, this idea of risk of getting kicked out of the game, of running out, of getting deep into debt. Some people see that as fuel. And if you are one of those people who needs to feel like all the chips are on black 42, well then, you know what you need to do. But for the rest of us, the idea of being able to continue playing the game is more important than feeling what feels like existential risk. When you hear Seth's voice, it's so soothing. Uh, you know that this man is speaking 100% truth and everything will be right in the world. But the first part of his response is that all throughout history, humans have to work. You know, that's not something we can get away from. You have to do things in order to survive, whether that's being a hunter-gatherer or working 40 hours in a cubicle so you can have the rest of your life to not work 40 hours within that cubicle, 
that is just reality. People have to work and money is something we need to uh, get us by, at least in this particular society that we live. What I would do is realize that even after work, you have six or seven or eight hours a day, plus weekends, to do your art. And if you can do your art without the pressure of knowing you need to do it to make the rent, it's entirely possible your art will be more generous, more heartfelt, more magical. That ironically, the less you need your art to make money, the more it's possible that your art will make money. When I don't have any other income besides what I do creatively, I find myself making things that are either guaranteed to make me money or that I think will make me money. And uh, a lot of the fun and the spontaneity disappears in the work. And to take this on a larger scale, there are a lot of movies that cost a lot of money. Something like the Justice League film costs an enormous amount of money and it needs to make an enormous amount of money to earn back what they spent on it. And when they're in that kind of position, even though it's Warner Brothers, it's a massive corporation, they have more money than I could ever dream of, they have to make decisions based out of fear because there's such a huge investment in this product. Uh, Guillermo del Toro said something similar about Pacific Rim, and he didn't feel that film was compromised, but it was a movie that cost an awful lot of money and it was considered a failure because it did not make an excessive amount of money. The Shape of Water being cheap to make doesn't have to perform like gangbusters to make its money back. And the fact that it was a huge hit and won Best Picture at the Academy Awards is just icing on the cake. Uh, that's a film I particularly love. And you can really feel that this is a personal piece. It's a fun piece that Guillermo has made. Uh, that's kind of what I want for my own artwork. I have seen it in my friends who are artists. They move to a much larger city than Phoenix. They say, I have to make things that make money. They shave off all the weird edges of what they're doing. I don't know if they're any happier for it. Certainly all of us who are involved in photography and want to be professional photographers, uh, we want to do that because we want to express ourselves and not necessarily because we want to change our personality or we want to shave off what makes us unique. All I know is that part-time jobs here and there mean my stress level is down. I can think about something else besides paying the bill that's due tomorrow. And I'm real happy about it. Uh, if you are in a similar position and you're feeling shame or stress, because you are not spending your entire life creating. Um, believe me, the grass is always greener on the other side. My big projects that I've been working on, a animated series for YouTube and uh, an animated documentary on my folk hero Phil Oaks, I have not been able to touch either of those since I stopped working my part-time jobs in the gallery and uh, teaching high school. When I had those jobs, I advanced so much further in my personal projects than what I've been able to do in the time that I haven't been working part-time. And the main reason for that is because the freelance work I'm doing, making music videos for other people that it's not my music and it's not my project, uh, shooting products for other people, not my products. Uh, you know, these things have eaten up all of my time and ultimately they're not projects that I own, they're not projects that I really personally care about that much, it's just a way to pay a bill. And of course, when you're working freelance and you're putting up with people who, maybe they pay you, maybe they don't, maybe they say, I'll get you next week, maybe they forget completely, uh, maybe they abandon the project halfway through, I mean, that stuff does not help me grow, does not help me make good art, that's what it's all about. So. Hope this was helpful to you. So have a good week. Talk to you next time.